We've got Dan Riskin. He's going to be joining us. In fact, he is right there. Or is it right now? Is it we're doing this right this minute? Okay, I did not realize that. I thought we were going to a break. But Dan, look, let's round up the world of science and technology. It's a wonderful thing, especially when I really don't understand what's going on. But Dan, great to see you right next to me here. Good to see you. You look so small. I feel so that. big. Yeah, it's quite a size contrast, isn't it, here? Like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I thought I was just teasing to this, but look, let's get to the nitty gritty of what we're talking about here. Uh, maybe we could estimate head sizes or even forehead sizes here. But, you know, Dan, what is the trick to making a more accurate estimate, estimate with an unknown quantity? Nice turn, Nick. Okay, so that? here's the game, is that you're asked how many jelly beans in the jar or how long is it going to take to drive to Madison, Wisconsin, or whatever you're trying to estimate, and you make a guess, and that's great. Now, if you had a group of people all guessing, the average of all their guesses would turn out to be strangely accurate. That's this neat thing about groups. And so the question is, is there a way you can do that yourself? Can you ask yourself multiple times and then come up with your own kind of weird average? And people have been trying to do that for some time and haven't really come up with a good trick but this is the latest and they did it with a whole bunch of people on a whole bunch of different things they were trying to estimate and it works better than your first guess so the idea is if i say to you how much does a mini cooper weigh like a modern mini cooper you make your first guess and then after you've made that guess you ask yourself who is somebody i know that always disagrees with me that i respect what would they say and you, the guess of somebody who always disagrees with you, not somebody smarter, not somebody who's an expert in that field, but somebody who just always disagrees with you, always disagrees with you. And you come up with their guess. And when you average those two guesses, you will come up with a better estimate, usually, hmm. than your first guess. Interesting. That's an interesting strategy here. Uh, let's bring it into the workplace now, Dan, and talk about, you know, narcissistic bosses. They can really hinder cooperation within a workplace, and within an organization, can't they? Absolutely. And this is something that everybody who's got a narcissistic boss already knows. They're a real pain to work for. I mean, you think of Elon Musk, right? He's the perfect example of a narcissist. He loves being the center of attention. He loves making dramatic statements. He loves making rules and he likes to always have it come back to him. And if you've ever had a boss that's like that, you now have scientific evidence that backs up what you already are saying at the water cooler to your colleagues, which is that it's not very good for productivity. When you have a narcissistic boss, this latest research shows, they're less likely to take advantage of all the resources within a company that could give advice that could help. So if you have different branches that do different things and that complement one another, the way a company enjoys the benefit of that is for those to talk to each other. And when you have a narcissistic boss in one department, the research shows they're not going to listen to those other people. They're going to try to make the decision themselves so they can be the center of attention, and that doesn't work as well. Yeah, all right. That's a good uh, workplace strategy to keep in mind then, is sort of dump the narcissism. Uh, let's move on to something uh, fascinating out of this world. The Mars rover, rover, pardon me, Curiosity, found some really weird formations on the red planet. Yeah, it did. So the Curiosity rover sent some pictures of what clearly is an alien trying to get out of the sand, if you mm. ask me. But, uh, you know, people didn't ask me. They asked NASA. They asked the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. What is this? And so the Internet was buzzing. This was an image taken May 17th. There isn't a scale bar, so you can't quite see what size this is. But uh, the scientists, being scientists, have tried to make it boring. They've said, no, this isn't. It's not an alien. It's not a, an insect leg that's coming up out of the sand. What this is is cement that has filled the cracks of an ancient deposit and then erosion has taken away the deposit itself and left this in its place. And so if you've ever seen hoodoos here on Earth, they look different because our gravity is stronger and the wind is stronger, but it's the same basic formation as a hoodoo here on Earth. Fascinating stuff. Okay, well, that's really great. Dan, I'm sorry if I ruined the beginning of all this by thinking we were going to break, but you know what? We'll wrap this all up. I just, I just keep, like, your head is so big compared to me right now. This is just, <laughs> this is such a shot. I mean, yeah, exactly. Actually, so let's, let's invite Jen over here and do something uh, live. You know, live. I'm, I'm always Dan, so thank you of, so much. Of my big head, so here. I just... Yeah. I'd love to take a selfie with yeah. Dan right now because head, yeah. his head would look the biggest. So. Right, okay. Cheers. Well, you know what, Dan, <laughs> we'll talk to you next week. We'll have a great conversation, Dan. Take care, Dan. guys.